In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Well, good morning to you all and welcome to our Eucharist this morning. Welcome to those watching at home as well. Today we give thanks for the life of Saint Asaph, bishop in the 6th century. The biographer of St. Kentigern states that when he founded a monastic settlement on the banks of the river Elwy, one of his favourite pupils was a nobly born boy named Asaph. The biography includes a story which underlines Asaph's obedience to his spiritual master. When Kentigern was recalled to Strathclyde to become Bishop of Glasgow, Asaph was unanimously appointed Bishop of Llanelwy, which later became known as St. Asaph in English. He remained there for the rest of his life and was buried there. The cluster of names connected with Asaph in northern Flintshire, Llan Asa, Pant Asa and Fanon Asa, suggest that this may have been his native area. And so we give thanks today for St. Asaph, for his faithfulness, to God and to the people among whom he lived and served. And we offer our Eucharist today for the bishop and people of the present day diocese of St. Asaph. Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you. No secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit that we may love and worship you faithfully, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The saints were faithful unto death, and now dwell in the heavenly kingdom forever. As we celebrate their joy, let us bring to the Lord our sins and weaknesses and ask for his mercy. Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin. Strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who called Asaph to be a bishop in your church and to proclaim the gospel to this nation, give us, your servants, such faith and power of love that as we rejoice in his triumph, we may profit by his example through Jesus Christ our Lord, whom, by the power of the Spirit, you raise to live with you, his God and Father, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Certain individuals came down from Judea and were teaching the brothers, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. And after Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem to discuss this question with the apostles and the elders. So they were sent on their way by the church, and as they passed through both Phoenicia and Samaria, they reported the conversion of the Gentiles and brought great joy to all the believers. When they came to Jerusalem, they were welcomed by the church 
and the apostles and the elders, and they reported all that God had done with them. But some believers who belonged to the sect of the Pharisees stood up and said, it is necessary for them to be circumcised and ordered to keep the law of Moses. The apostles and the elders met together to consider this matter. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm is, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us go to the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And now our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem built as a city that is at unity in itself. Thither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go to the house of the Lord, as is decreed for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord. For there are set the thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Let us go to the house of the Lord. The Lord be on my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. We stand for the gospel reading. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Listen to the gospel of Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. This summer, I shall have been ordained for 20 years, which is uh, quite a remarkable thing as far as I'm concerned. I know what you're thinking, he doesn't look anywhere near old enough. <laughs> it's true, isn't it? It's true. And I was wondering the other day, I wonder how many church meetings I've attended and chaired and been part of in 20 years. <laughs> I could go through all my diaries and, and, and top them up and let you know, but I've got better things to do with my time. There have been quite a few meetings over the years, and sometimes has to be said uh, such meetings are great fun and productive and really positive. Other times, shall we say, less so. And sometimes there's a little bit of disagreement and a little bit of argument, and they can get quite interesting. And I was thinking of this because of um, a line that appears in our first reading today from the Acts of the Apostles. And uh, I've said many times before, Luke is the master storyteller, the master author. He is the author of Acts. And he includes this line in today's passage. After Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and debate with them. No small dissension and debate. In other words, they had a blazing row. But Luke is putting it in those terms. Perhaps that would be in the minutes of a PCC meeting. There was no small dissension and debate. It covers a multitude of things. 
Well, what were this dissension and debate all about that Barnabas and Paul were engaged in with various others in the early church? Well, in this particular passage, Paul and Barnabas and the others have just returned from their first missionary journey where they've left Israel and they firstly went to Cyprus and then up into Asia Minor to spread the message and convert people to Christianity and to found new churches. And what was happening was that many, many Gentiles, non-Jews, were coming to faith in Christ. And Paul, as he writes in his letters, was very much of the belief that everybody was welcome to come and be a Christian. There were no more barriers anymore. All you had to do was believe in Jesus. It was an act of faith. And if you had that faith, then you could be part of God's family. That was Paul's belief. On the other hand, you had Christians who were Jewish. I mean, Paul was Jewish, but these uh, other Jewish Christians were more hard line. And their opinion was, you had to become a Jew first before you could become a Christian. Because in their belief, Jesus was Jewish and all the early apostles were Jewish. Therefore, all Christians should be Jewish first. And that meant, of course, being circumcised, if you were male, and abiding by all the strictures of the Jewish law, all the food laws and all the other ritual laws, laws about what you could and couldn't do on the Sabbath, what you could and couldn't wear in terms of clothing, what it had to be made of, and all these laws, 613 individual laws from the Old Testament, they said, you've got to adopt all of this if you want to be a Christian. And Paul said, no, all you need is faith. And this was the disagreement, the no small dissension and debate. And it's laid out for us in the reading. Certain individuals came and said, unless you are circumcised according to the custom of Moses, you cannot be saved. That was the, the hardline Jewish Christian view. Paul and Barnabas had the contrary view. And so, what did they do about this? Well, we're told in good church tradition, they decided to have a meeting. Um, Paul and Barnabas and some of the others were appointed to go up to Jerusalem and discuss this question with the apostles and the elders. So they were sent on their way, it says. And this meeting was a very important meeting in the history of the early church. The church has only been going about 10, 15, 20 years by this point. This meeting is known as the Council of Jerusalem, and it was called together to discuss this important question of what level of commitment you needed in order to be a member of the church. Did you need to adopt all the Jewish ways and all the Jewish law, or did you not? And the result of the Council of Jerusalem is revealed in tomorrow's passage, so you'll have to wait and find out. Um, but I, in case you're not able to watch online or be in St. Luke's tomorrow, um, I'll give you a little hint of what happens. It's a good old-fashioned compromise, good old-fashioned compromise to settle the question. But what it reminds us of is the fact that there will always be differences of opinion in any human organisation. Sometimes in my last 20 years, I might have thought to myself, can't everybody just agree? Most of the time it would be, can't everybody just agree with me? <laughs> but in any human organisation, of course, nobody's going to agree on anything, even in the church, because we're all different and we all have different ideas. And in actual fact, debate and discussion is healthy because it helps us to get to the heart of the matter. And different people might have different perspectives that we'd never thought about before. The important thing is to talk through our differences, just as they did in the early church. There was this debate, there was this argument. Instead of just becoming entrenched or splitting, they decided to come together and discuss it and debate it. And when we discuss and debate and argue about things, whether it's in the church or elsewhere, there's one important thing that we should remember. And this is what Jesus 
says in the Gospel reading today, where he says that I am the vine, you are the branches. Referring to his disciples, referring to us. I am the vine, you are the branches. Let's just think about that really quite lovely image for a moment. Jesus is the vine, we are the branches. In other words, we, each of us, are connected to Jesus. We are part of Jesus, just like branches are connected to a vine. And just as, of course, with a vine and branches, the sap, the life force flows from the vine to the branches, so it is with us and Jesus. So when we are thinking about our fellow Christians, when we are discussing, debating, arguing, we need to remember that we are all part of the vine. We are all branches of the same vine. Each of us is part of Jesus. And that, I think, is important to remember and will determine how we deal with one another. We are all branches of the same vine. And there's another lovely phrase which one of my favourite phrases of Jesus from all of the Gospels, where he says this, apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Which I think should be the motto of every church, to remind ourselves what our focus is and where we get the strength, the grace, the power to live out the Christian life. It is from Jesus. We don't do it with our own power, with our own strength. We can only achieve anything as the church by remaining rooted in Jesus as branches of the vine. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Let us remain rooted to Jesus the vine. Let us, with our disagreements and our differences of opinion, seek to bear much fruit for him and for his kingdom. Amen. Gwedhiun, let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you that you promise to hear us when we pray in faith. We give you thanks today for the life and witness of your servant, Saint Asa, we pray for Bishop Gregory Cameron, the current Bishop of St Asaph, and all the people and clergy of that diocese. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our own diocese, for June, our bishop, and all the clergy and people. And today, we are asked to pray for all involved with the Diocesan Board of Education, for Andrew Rickett, the Diocesan Director, and all those who work with him. We are also asked to pray in the worldwide Anglican Church for the Diocese of Buhiga in Burundi, for Bishop Evariste, and for all the clergy and people there. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our world, for peace and justice everywhere, for all those in need, and we remember particularly today all those killed or injured in the train disaster in Mexico yesterday, all those affected by the COVID pandemic around the world and especially those suffering in India at this time. Pray for all those seeking to bring an end to the COVID pandemic, especially all who are working on the rollout of the vaccines. And we pray particularly that the vaccines may be made more available in the poorer countries of our world. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. hear our prayer. We pray for our own local community, our families, friends and neighbours. 
Today especially we pray for all who live in St John Street, Bellevue Street and Union Street. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks, O Lord, for all those who have gone before us in this life, especially those who have been dear to us. Among the recently departed, we pray especially for Robert Nicholson, Kathleen Phelps and Guerville Williams. And we remember as well those whose anniversary of death occurs at this time, especially Fred Cooper. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for ever. And I'll be pleased to accept the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty, Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. We celebrate this feast in thanksgiving for your servant, Saint Asaph. You inspire us by his care and love, instruct us by his teaching, and encourage us by his example as one who cares for your flock. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hear us, Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Through him accept our sacrifice of praise and grant that by the power of your Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be for us his body and his blood. Who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which he shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. Therefore, Father, remembering the saving death and resurrection of your Son, we offer to you in thanksgiving this bread and this cup, your gifts to us. And we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all of us who share this bread and this cup. Strengthen our faith, make us one, and welcome us and all your people into the glorious kingdom of your Son. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. Grant that these gifts of your body and blood may cleanse me from my sins and from every evil. Keep me faithful always to your teaching and let me never be parted from you. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious. We thank you, Father, for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son in this holy sacrament, through which we are assured of the hope of eternal life. We offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. Keep us in the fellowship of his body, the Church, and send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. God give you grace to follow Saint Asaph and all his saints in faith and hope and love, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ, alleluia, alleluia.